<laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's a strop. <laughs> no, is that your accent? <laughs> no, no, that's D R O P. Um, it's a piece of leather, and I put it on MDF. God, this must be 20 years old. Okay, and I just took some um, some leather I had kicking around. Uh, there's sometimes uh, like my uh, oh look, just hang out here. Check this out. What? <laughs> This is an old belt. I can't throw this stuff away. Okay, I just cut it up. And what I'll do is this is a, this is called Rouge. Okay, this is actually, I think I get this at Lee Valley, uh, Veritas. This is a really good strop and Rouge. And what it is, is instead of, like if I have a chisel like this, okay? And it's not that it's dull, but it's just not cutting. Uh, perfect. I always have this and I'll go like this. I'll do a, a quick lap on the back. Okay. And that's actually a very fine grit. Oh. So what that's doing is that's bringing it up to the best of sharpness. And then I'll just take it like this. I always, I always sharpen close to myself or use stuff close to myself. And I go like this and I just drag, I feel that bevel and I just drag it back. And sometimes a couple of quick passes. That's back up and running perfectly. That's like super shiny. Too. Yeah, this is and this is a little a flex tool that I've had. I think it's called Flex Cut, and I've had these. Oh God, I've had these forever, and this is one of my go-to chisels, so I can get where I need to get with it. And it's just this thing is always wicked sharp. Awesome. Cool, and that's a strop. So, so now you know what this is. You used to see them in the the old movies with the barbers. When they okay. did the straight razor, gotcha. that's what a strop is. I just charge it with this rouge. Sometimes the, the old bobs used to use an old belt to sharpen their uh, lasers. Razors. <laughs> rouge. Wait, that's and, the face. And there you go. <laughs> this is an all. That's all? I'll oh, stop it. Oh my God. <laughs> that one's free. A W L. Okay. Every shop should have these. I've had this forever. And it, whenever I'm using a handheld drill, okay, and I'm using a big bit like this, okay, yes, it has a center point on there. But if I need, well, I always need this. I need an exact starting point. You see right here? We yep. want that center point to go right there. I will take this and go just like this to get it started. See oh, that? Wow. Yeah. So now it's easy. If you're in low light or something, look, there you go, so it doesn't walk on you. Oh, okay. Okay? And there you go. All right, so what are we doing here? Are we doing laundry or what? <laughs> e no, these are all laundered. These are old t-shirts that I have uh, that I don't throw them away. Uh, he doesn't throw anything away. I give away all the t-shirts that are dyed. They have a dye in a black, yellow, green, whatever. Uh, but I always save the whites and the grays. Okay. And you'll understand why um, in a few minutes. <clears throat> We're, I call this apprenticeship work. I'm going to have you cut these up into rags. Okay. Sounds okay. Good. So if we're wiping stain, that's why I don't use dyed because uh, that will. And I, I used to drive me completely crazy because that dye would transfer in there. I because see. it's not just the, it's not the pigment, it's the, um, the medium that's carrying it. So if you're using something that has, that's an alcohol based dye that you're applying or wiping away, okay, or uh, mineral, uh, uh, mineral spirit based, whatever. That's what activates the dye in the t-shirt. Oh, so what okay. I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you start cutting these up. What's right. your weapon of choice? My fuchsia fiskers. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, so there is a, a method. Time, time out, time out. Okay, so there is a way to, to cut the t-shirt, okay? And the way I've always done it is right here. Uh, I've cut the sleeves off. Those make great for applying wax. Okay. Okay, and then what I do is I divide it up. But here's, here's, here's the whole point of this video I want to show you. I used to use scissors until I was up in my wife's um, uh, quilting studio upstairs. Craft room. Okay, and uh, I saw her using these and I went, now that's the ticket. It's a rotary. So here, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have you cut that sleeve off with the scissors. With the scissors, okay. okay. 
do do do. And what I'll do is when I'm getting ready for finishing, and it's been a while in my rag, uh, place has, uh, how do you say, um, depleted my storage. Mm -hmm. I'll just spend five, 10 minutes and watch, and just cut these right apart. Wow. Okay, and then Holy I'll take God. it like this, and I'll just take it, I usually have the shirt like this, and just see how it's like cutting pizza. Hey, now we're talking. Hey, Mario. Okay, and just cutting these rags and setting them. And you have all different sizes like that, and you're ready to go. So there we go. Okay, every shop I've ever been in, been in, every one I've owned has always had one of these because I like to save time. So, we, hey, you kind of guessed it. It is a saw blade, right? That's Everybody knows that's a hacksaw blade. Okay, for cutting steel, all right? So, you guys have heard about this paper before. Uh, Imperial, it's nine by 11. And you have heard about different sanders like uh, half sheet sander and quarter sheet sander, right? So, um, this, jig is to rip paper so it, it gets a little confusing sometimes because when you set up a half sheet sander you want to use this part of the half right so what you do and this is why i have it in here like this i take it like this and i feed it in like this okay and i put it to that line right there which i have as a quarter okay not to get confusing and i hold the blade like this and there you go there's your half sheet that's wow okay holy now, snap now what you can do is you can take this and we're gonna look a little more into this but now I need a quarter sheet so you can rip paper all day long just like this and my buddy Ralph showed me this about 35 40 years ago to do that that's awesome and we'll talk about it. now the other thing is is you'll see I have these two marks on here so sometimes if I'm just ripping quarter sheet paper and I don't want to feed it in there I'll bring it right to my half mark like this and do it on this orientation and then do it with my quarter sheet like this and you can break your paper down like this and i usually have this stacked like this so it's ready to go all right we're well, still talking about sandpaper and uh i showed you how to do the trifold yep. okay in a previous video there's sometimes you want a little bit larger uh surface area uh, th for me this is just right and you know the trifold how uh, you'll you can always renew the grit okay and we you never want to put grit to grit and fold it so this is a, a a product that i like to use when we do contours and in fact we use something like this when we were sanding mm -hmm. the rungs on the um the furniture right. uh, restoration video we did what people don't know about this is when i sand with it okay and you can really see it on this walnut okay you get all this extra dust you always have to tack it off before you put finish. Well, the back of it's foam, and see that? That's your initial oh, wow. tack on there. Okay, I guess it has built-in dust <laughs> It acts like, it, by the way, it's your initial tack. Okay, yeah. but I love this for sanding contours. But we get an abundance of this. So here's another, uh, I always call them hacks, but say I want to use this abrasive, I don't have a ripping station. What I like to do is I like to take this, and I'm sure there's probably a hundred videos on YouTube of this already, but I thought while we were out here today, I might as well talk about it. So what I did is I created a, a folding line here. It's a reference. Mm -hmm. And so now I could take this look and fold it like this, but that won't do us any good, will it? No, because now I'm grit to grit. So what we want to do is I like to just take a, a, some shears like this, and I'm just going to follow this line. You can use a, a raisin knife, but I'm just going to cut this with some shears, okay? Just like this, and stop. Right? So now I can take it like this. I always got to remember how to do this. But you see how paper goes to paper and paper goes to paper. Oh, wow. So now I can sand with this, right? Right. And then when this grit kind of dies out, I can open it up like this and flip to a new grit like this and keep going. That's awesome. Okay, so that's just another tip about sandpaper. Okay, so this is cherry. Uh, it's my favorite uh, wood to work with. Uh, I grew up using a lot of it. Um, and that's cherry. Why are they different colors? Because it goes the... That cherry here uh -huh. used to be this cherry color here. This is a cherry I just sanded. Here's the important part, yesterday. 
Okay, I grabbed this because I knew we were going to do something like this today. And I want to talk about this because this topic is so overlooked in woodworking. Uh, I've heard it called a bunch of different things. The aging of wood or it, it gains a patina. Always remember this. Air and light change wood. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over so you can see it. I call it wood oxidation because that's what water, humidity in the air, and uh, uh, temperature. Yeah. Okay, sunlight. Boy, UVs really change wood. Right. Because this here, I put a natural oil on, mm -hmm. but over time, this piece of wood will look like that. Oh, okay. okay. It's because of light, air. Okay, now, I pulled this stick out, and yesterday, it looked like this, and I sanded it this way. Okay, oh. now, here's the important thing to remember, and I always like talking through this, because uh, growing up, I also used another wood, and it was pine, okay? This is southern yellow pine, okay? And I sanded all of these yesterday, okay? You see that right there? That's how it started out. Okay. Okay, I just pulled these out of the scrap bin, okay? Now, the important thing is, is I used to do this. I used to sand everything and walk away from it. Okay, and the next day, wake up, or two days later, or then the following weekend, I'd wake up and go, okay, I can now finish it. Right. Okay, now, there was one time, by the way, that works, because they all age at the same time. Okay, okay. It's the next day. But the next day, I woke up and I went, oh man, I forgot to sand this side or something. Guess what? It has changed overnight. Don't think that this doesn't change. It does ever oh, so wow. slightly. So your oils absorb differently or your stains. So I was always wondering why was this one lighter than these two? And it was because I had just abraded a fresh edge on it oh, with okay. the sandpaper. Okay. That so, makes sense. So you can do that. Wait a day, two days, but don't go and sand more on just one piece. Sand everything over again because you all want it to match. Okay. Okay. It's it's going to change. Like what's oh. always going to move. Wood very rarely moves this way. It moves this way tangentially. Okay. Okay. Here's one for you. And I know you grabbed this one time. It said Sedge. What is this? <laughs> okay. This is an old box I did. I use it as a teaching example, because what, what do you think that is? Well, I know what it is, but I wouldn't know what it is. Okay, so <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is, this has been sitting, mm -hmm. okay, and I'm gonna take a sand it through. That, to me, guessing it 100 miles away, that's maple. Right. But you'll see that change as well, <clears throat> okay? But as I do this, it's gonna pop. Oh wow. Okay, I think this box is about 30 years old. And this here is Purple Heart. See how this oxidizes over time? Yeah. Okay, and I just, I love showing this because people wow. think, wow. So when you put finish on, everybody says, oh, it's just, it looks good. No, it's a protective film. So you really have to look at labels, okay? When you're building stuff and see what's in that protective film, what's in that finish. I made a dire mistake once because I built a cherry bar, all the cabinetry, and oh, by the way, it's mine. <laughs> and I wanted to finish the bar top with some really hard finish. So I went out and I got this stuff uh, somebody recommended for me. But here's what I didn't do I didn't read the can on it cautiously. Wow. Everything else on those cabinets had turned into a beautiful red patina. So I went, oh my God, that curly cherry bar top will be really nice, right? Right. Guess what was in there? <laughs> what was in there? UV protectant. So um. it, over time, it breaks down, but that UV protectant, it took a long time for the bar to match those cabinets. Remember, sunlight and air, the water in the air, okay, will affect how wood ages. Awesome. So there you go. Hey, and like we always say, be positive and stay shy.